Welcome to the Therapy de Laboratory in the Physics Department of Politecnico di Milano. The purpose of this laboratory is to perform time-resolved studies on ultrafast dynamics in atoms and molecules. By ultrafast dynamics, we mean all those which occur in the femtosecond or even in the attosecond time scale. In order to do so, first of all, we have to generate isolated attosecond pulses in order to use them in uh, XV pump IR probe experiments. Several diagnostics are suitable to monitor the process which are under investigation. At the moment, we are using a reaction microscope, which allows us to reconstruct the full 3D momentum of both ions and electrons in coincidence. Within the high harmonic generation scheme, it is possible to generate isolated attosecond pulses starting from the commercially available IR laser systems. Our laser system is a CIP stable titanium sapphire delivering 30 femtosecond pulses centered at 800 nanometers. The energy per pulse is 2 millijoule and the repetition rate is 10 kHz. A high repetition rate is recommended when performing experiments during which ions and electrons are both detected in coincidence. We want now to compress the pulses delivered by our laser system. This means that we want to shorten their duration from the original 30 femtoseconds down to less than 10 femtoseconds. The holocore fiber technique allows to broaden the spectrum from the IR to the wall visible range, while the chirp mirror compensates for the dispersion, thus compressing the pulse. When laser pulses start to become short, and by short we mean on the order of the duration of one optical cycle, their electric field becomes asymmetric. This asymmetry depends on the pulse duration itself and on the CAP. The stereo ATI here, or phase meter, is developed in order to measure uh, these parameters and to display them. In this figure, each point represents one laser shot. The radius of the circle represents the pulse duration, while the angle with respect to the axis of the ordinates represents the phase value. This is our chamber for the high harmonic generation. With the use of proper techniques, like the polarization gating or even the ionization gating, we are able to generate the XV coherent continuum supporting the isolated attosecond pulses. With the proper combination of the generating medium and of the thin metallic filter, we are able to select the spectrum of the UV radiation within the range from about 12 to 40 electron volt. This is the reaction microscope. It's a charged particle spectrometer. It allows to measure the full 3D momentum of uh, ions and electrons in coincidence. This means that for a given uh, photoionization or photodissociation events, it measures the 3D momentum of the electron and the ion which were belonging to the same atom or molecule. Obviously, in order to do so, we want to keep the events to be less than one per laser pulse. This also explains why we want to have a high repetition rate. This will allow to lower the acquisition time as long as we cannot increase the number of events per laser pulse. This crate contains uh, all the electronics which is necessary to power up the uh, reaction microscope and then to process the signal from the single particle detection and then to pass from the analog to the digital treatment of the signal. On my left here, there is the XV spectrometer, which helps to keep monitored all the time the XV radiation. Now, let's give a couple of examples of the experimental capabilities of the laboratory. Temporal characterization of sub femtosecond XUV pulses generated by a high order harmonic generation is usually performed via the so-called attosecond streaking technique. It consists of a two-color for the electron experiment, usually performed on a noble gas, where an XUV attosecond pulse triggers the ionization of the medium. And the delayed visible near-infrared pulse is used as a streaking field. If, and only if, the ionization process takes place within a small fraction of the optical cycle of the streaking field, the photoelectron momentum distribution wiggles up and down 
varying the delay between the two pulses because of total momentum conservation. The measurement can be performed with a reaction microscope and it allows for the retrieval of both the XUV and a stricken field. Here, for instance, we demonstrate the generation of isolated at the second pulses at 20 ADV photon energy with a time duration down to 380 at the seconds. But the main feature of a reaction microscope is that it measures all of the three components of the momentum vector of all the detected particles in coincidence. This can be useful in many different situations. Just to give an example, let's think of the few photon ionization of uh, an atom where an XUV at the second pulse triggers the excitation to a manifold of bound excited states and the delayed IR pulse ionizes this excited bound electron. Now, it is clear that because of the broad bandwidth of the auto second pulse, many different bound excited states can be involved as intermediate states of the process. Moreover, a different number of IR photons may be needed in order to overcome the ionization potential, depending on a particular ionization path. This leads to a highly non-trivial angular momentum distribution of the continuum electron. Then, angular resolution is required in order to fully understand the process, and this is achieved with a reaction microscope. By collecting the electron momentum particle by particle, we can fully characterize the distribution. For instance, we can project it on different planes or even visualize the square modulus of the continuum wave function in the full three-dimensional momentum space. The combination of at the second pulses with the reaction microscope clearly has the potential of providing a completely new insight into ultra-fast processes in atoms and small molecules.